what it do y'all it's your girl makeup and travel and for today's video your girl is here to just get back on her soapbox a lot of you guys liked one of my most recent videos where i was titled just stop shopping um and i just got on here and just kind of was sharing my feelings about how people are talking about things but they can change and drastically change their own fate if they just take their own in their own hands um real quickly if you're wondering if i did this makeup look on camera i did not it actually was a really easy makeup look so if you're interested in letting me seeing me do it i can do it it'd probably be more realistic to be a instagram um tutorial though because it really was a very quick video or quick makeup look um just kind of the highlights i used my beauty wide seasons palette on my eyes i've been really wanting to use it again i haven't used it in a really long time and i love that palette i did a look combination so i did my Too faced liquid lipstick in evil miss evil twin with the fumi lip gloss on top and then for my cheeks i used my laura mercier Use my Laura Mercier blush in Plum Berry. It is like a satiny type blush right there. And then to top it off and as my highlighter, I used my blush highlighter um, from Beauty Bakery and Stop and Smell the Rosé. So those are the highlights. Everything else, if I can remember, will be down below. But honestly, the rest of it isn't as important as those three groups of items um so yeah if you were interested in hearing me kind of talk about the abh last three releases then just keep watching Alrighty guys, so I kind of, I never write anything down, so my thoughts are never organized. I kind of just come on here and babble, and I truly was not expecting to do a video at all tonight, so expect a lot of babbling. But ABH, if you did not know, has released three palettes lately. They're all in the Norvina series. Now Norvina did do um, her very first palette, um, kind of collaborating with her own brand, or a brand that she's helping run at this point. Um, in the typical ABH packaging. I will have that on the screen so that you guys can see it. It's pretty much, um, a it, it is a movie um, palette, but it's very cool tone mauves with a decent amount of neutral tones or neutral colors in there as well. Then months later, I don't know the exact amount of months later, she came out with her very first Norvina palette. Now this is a lot of people are talking about how you can really start to see the transition from Anastasia really being the creative director to now Norvina being the creative director um, and just like seeing their different ideals of how they wear makeup and use makeup. Um, and this is a Big Daddy palette. This is their first Big Daddy palette and it is $60. Um, compared to their typical $45. I will have the very first Norvina palette on the screen. Now this palette dropped and everybody was like, what is this? What is this? This is so different. And all the people who are complaining about ABH's original packaging, they can no longer complain about that because it was not that velvety packaging. And then all those who were complaining like, I want more color from ABH, could not continue to complain because you got color in this palette. The biggest complaints that people were having is that the color scheme was a hot toddy mess. People couldn't understand the color scheme because the top three rows were definitely like this pinky purple color scheme. The bottom two rows were not. The bottom two rows were more colorful in nature. I need to find my phone for this next part. Yeah, hold on. Okay, I can't seem to find the the Instagram page that I quite literally just followed, but when I find her, I will have her or his page um, listed down below and linked down below and on the screen as well. Um, this person took the time to reorganize the palette and now look at it. How do you feel about it now? I think we are so quick to jump on the bandwagon of, oh, this is crazy, oh, this is that. Y'all were just complaining about the fact that ABH was not giving you color. Now she's bringing you color. Now it may not be the very curated, curated collection or group of colors that you're expecting, like a ColourPop monochromatic palette, but the Norvina collection never claimed to be a monochromatic palette at all. 
you can really tell that this is geared towards like not to say makeup artists but people who love colorful looks one and makeup artists in the makeup artist type world they wanted the 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 shades be very pigmented and blendable and you see that in the transition from the subculture formula to the Jackie Ina formula to now the Norvina 3 eyeshadow palette formulas. So <clears throat> when it comes to this palette I think people were so quick to judge on the fact that the three the the palette was kind of curated at the top three rows and not necessarily a bottom two and didn't take the time to look and see okay but if I really took those bottom two rows and stuck them where they should be in the monochromatic realm of the top three rows would this be a curated palette would this palette make more sense to me now I still haven't gotten an answer because I haven't purchased the palette I think my friend Katie purchased it so I might text her right now but if the Novena palette has um, magnetic pans, your whole dilemma is fixed. Your whole dilemma is understood. Now you can purchase the palette without having a worry about the fact that it is a hodgepodge of a palette. Now I'm not saying go ahead and purchase it because your girl ain't purchasing it. Your girl actually went ahead and ooh, child, my computer almost died. Let's. Let's not and said we did. Your girl actually created her own perfect ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. So I have no business at all telling you guys to go purchase something because I have been doing my best, <laughs> my actual best, not to purchase things. But I'm just saying. Stop complaining about one thing like, oh, you're not bringing me color. You're bringing me these really boring, unsaturated palettes. And then when Norvina drops a highly pigmented, highly saturated palette, you're like, ooh, I don't like it. Ooh, no, no. Y'all can't be, y'all, y'all. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. The second palette um, was the one that had most recently been announced. Well, I guess not most recently because clearly the third one was most recently announced. But you get what I'm saying. You get, you get my emphasis. And the second palette is a lot more cooler in tone. You get a lot more green, blue um, colors with a splash of warm tone colors. You get a couple of pinks, an orange, and a couple of really deep um, maroon burgundy-ish colors. Now once again the same Instagram handle which I, <laughs> I can't find her right now but that same handle she did also reorganize this palette so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the screen as well. Do you like it now? Take the time to really see what this palette is providing for you. Take the time to see is this making sense? Yes, in the current arrangement, it may not make sense, but start to look at it. Can I rearrange it? A lot of people did that with the Kat Von D Saint and Center palette. A lot of people liked the colors, but didn't like the organization. So they took the time to depot the shades and then reorganize it. So why are we always complaining about, oh, this, this is a hot toddy mess, when in reality, this is just an artist version of a palette that you can reorganize for your mindset, for your artistic mindset, for your pleasure, for your accessibility. Not everybody can look at a hodgepodge of a palette and be able to immediately create 10 looks but some people can and some people like to see the color schemes mixed up so that they can really challenge themselves whereas other people's love to see the palettes in a monochromatic or slowly gradiating manner and I think both ways are okay but I think we need to stop immediately pouncing on a uh, palette and pouncing on a brand, pouncing on a creator like, oh, this is stupid. Oh, this doesn't make sense when just because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't make sense. Just because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean it doesn't make sense at all. It does make sense clearly to the person who created it, maybe even to the board of people who approved it. So take the time to really think about other people's perspectives. Don't always think about your own. I mean, 
that's just my opinion i i like to look at things more holistically i i do have an anthropology background so blame my schooling for that but yeah and then lastly let's go ahead and look at the third Narvina palette that she has revealed now this one has not released yet nor has the second one when I am recording it when I'm recording the second one will actually be releasing in three days so it releases um September no we're in August August are we in August what what month are we I don't even know we're in September September 26 that's when the second one will be releasing and the third one is set to release on the exact same day which is nice because then you can scoop up both in the same purchase that's actually really nice now this last one is definitely a more warm toned palette with a splash of some cool tones you get a couple of those greeny tones that appear to be in that same same um color family as the second palette and you get so you get some color overlap now that would be interesting Ooh, okay i'm gonna try and challenge myself i'm gonna try and challenge myself and pull out the shades that look to be overlapping between the three palettes because you get both purples blues some greens and some oranges and i think one or two yellows in all three palettes if not two of the three palettes so I'm going to take the time to do that right now and look at it. Now that you see all these shades really emphasized or blocked out, do you still need these palettes? Do you still need all three? Or can you just take the time to really say which one is going to really provide more for my collection? Which one is going to give me more colors that I don't already have? Or are you going to say which one am I going to get the most use out of? Which one do I gravitate towards more because I reach for these tones more often than others. Now let's dive back more into the Norvina volume three because I kind of skimmed over this one. This one like I said is a warm tone palette but it also has a lot more neutrals in there. I can clearly see at least four browns in different shades. You get a yellow like a greeny yellow you get some greens like I said some more burgundies and some reds and some oranges. So you definitely get different curated collections. I would say if you were trying to say which one is the most curated, I would definitely say for somebody that doesn't have like an artistic view and isn't like doesn't like to see a hodgepodge of colors just thrown in a palette i would definitely say the volume three is the most curated overall now you do have those greens popped in there but in my opinion those are more warm toned greens and not necessarily cool toned greens then you get into the first and the second one now to me the second one is more of my alley i love love greens and blues those are really nice and you get some blurples in there which i really really admire and appreciate the thing that does kind of throw this palette off i'm not gonna lie are those extremely warm tone shades so those burgundies and that orange those are the three shades that really just it like they are just out of the area they they in my opinion have no business being that palette now that's not to say that i don't like the color scheme but if we're really trying to like curate the collection you can tell that they just they ain't got no business being there i'm trying to scroll down trim mood she posts way too much to find a picture of the first one there you go and then you get to the first one where once again i think you have a decently curated palette now although you don't have it's not all purple it's not all pink and purple you definitely have all warm tones except for that one those two blues those are pretty not two the one blue that's pretty much the only cool tone that i see to my eye so when you break it down in my head and in my mindset and my artistic view and mo modest in my artistic view i don't have a problem with any of these palettes i think all of these palettes have a right and i think all of these palettes actually make sense for the abh brand because it brings more of the creative artistic view out of behind the scenes and actually puts it in their products specifically their eyeshadow palettes it brings the brand more color prior to that the brand did really stick to a lot of neutral 
brown color schemes and if you really take the time to like block out at least the last eight eyeshadow palettes and take out the browns you're stuck with very few shadows very few enough that you could probably build one palette with those few colors excluding maybe the subculture and the sultry because those two really not the sultry the subculture and the prism those two had a lot of color but those are beside the point i think these three eyeshadow palettes definitely have a place in the abh lineup and if they don't work for you they don't work for you but don't necessarily criticize the brand for trying something new because this is definitely in my opinion going to work for their favor because this is going to make them in the mindset of these young kids and these curate and these creators more of an instagram worthy brand these types of colors these saturations this blendability of the formula is really going to work towards this social media heavily driven world that we're in right now specifically makeup world now like i said i'm not telling you guys to buy any of these palettes i'm not telling you guys not to buy these palettes i'm not telling you go ahead and spend your what 60 times 3 120 180 dollars on 180 i'm not telling you to spend 180 dollars not spend 180 dollars on these three palettes if they bring something to your collection go for it but i'm just telling us that we should start to really critically analyze these releases and even if you are one of those people that really need to see something in a gradient or a, a monochromatically done out then maybe follow this one chick i'm telling you it was it's her I keep calling her her like I know her life. I don't know her. But this person's Instagram is fire. The fact that they take the time to really reorganize these palettes into a monochromatic, not monochromatic, in a gradient way is so beneficial. That helps me personally to no longer have an urge to get the Natasha Denona Metropolitan palette. And I saw on her Instagram as well, she did the Natasha Denona gold palette. I'm not getting it no more. I like the golds. The golds are interesting, but I have golds and I don't wear gold. So what am I doing? So just really take the time to look at your collection and take the time to consider how this fits into the brand before you criticize a little bit too much. These are all just my opinions, my thoughts. Your girl just wanted to sit down real quickly and film something because I was feeling this look. I was feeling it. I was feeling nice and sassy, nice and fall ready. Um, I think that's all I have to say. I think that's it. Um, I think. So I remember that I had one more point that I wanted to make. Um, the reason I was asking if these pans were magnetic is because I think it would be even more intriguing and beneficial for both ABH and their consumers if they released all the pans from each of the three Norvina palettes as singles and then let you build your own palette. That way, everybody gets the both of both worlds, best of both worlds. You get the already curated palettes and then you can build it so that it's even more monochromatic palette or you get all the shades that you actually want, etc, etc. I know a lot of people always feel this way about palettes, but I feel like this packaging just looks and screams like it's magnetic and that you can take the singles out and it would be beautiful if people could create their own palette now that's not to say that if let's say you get the first one because you love the pinks and the pink the pinks and the purples and then you get the second one because you love the greens and the blues and you just kind of mix the shade that you really love together and kind of put all the other shades separate you can definitely do that but then you're still spending 120 dollars whereas if abh were to make it this way you potentially might only have to spend it in 60 dollars or a little bit more because you're building your own palette um but yeah, that's all I really, for all this time, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> We're going to go with that's it. If you guys have any questions for me, any comments, I would love to hear you guys' opinions about these three palettes or just looking at palettes in a different way. Whether you prefer to look at them in a gradient mindset or if you like to look at them in a hodgepodge, I would love to have a conversation with you guys down below. Definitely check out the links down below specifically to this person's Instagram. I love it um i think that's it i'm off my soapbox i'm thirsty i'm tired i need to wake up tomorrow for work and your girl is here 
talking to y'all. So it has been real, y'all. Peace.